I'm joined with Illinois head soccer coach Janet Rayfield here to talk about the World Cup, especially U.S. And we have another Illinois player, a former Illinois player, also playing. We'll touch base with that in just a moment as well. But obviously, the U.S. women's soccer team, they got that first win over Vietnam. And I guess, you know, they were looking for a three-peat here, which would be making history for both men's and women if they do win the World Cup. But do you think they have what it takes to make it back to the championship and maybe come home with the gold? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. You know, every team, I think, in this World Cup has some injuries, as does the U.S. I think some of the emerging nations, we might want to take the word emerging off. You've seen some results. But I think the U.S. has such a potent attack. Um, I don't think there's a team out there that wants to look at Sophie Smith, Trini Rodman, Alex Morgan, um, Alyssa Thompson coming off the bench, Lynn Williams. I mean, you just look at the potent firepower we have, and I think that's really going to be what maybe makes the difference for the U.S. team. And obviously they get that 3-0 win over Vietnam. We'll kind of talk a little bit about that game in just a moment. But they're up here facing Netherlands on Wednesday. Talk to me a little bit about what you have seen from the Netherlands. I know you kind of watched that game with Netherlands and Portugal. Uh, those are their next two opponents. So talk to me a little bit about what you've seen from those two yeah, teams. Yeah, I think the Netherlands probably a little bit disappointed in their first game. And I think there are a lot of teams like that, you know, Norway. And so, you know, I think that second game, you're going to see teams settle in a little perform a little bit better. So I think the U.S.-Netherlands game could be a really um, tough, I think this is the toughest opponent in the group for the U.S. So this Netherlands game, I wouldn't call it a must win, but the result of this game could really, I think, dictate the the outcome of, the, of this group. And based on kind of the, the next round, finishing first in our group would certainly be a goal for the U.S. And obviously with their game against Vietnam, they, they were able to get a 3-0 win, but you know, I don't think that they necessarily loved the way they played. I don't want to put words in the U.S. team's mouth, but what was your opinion on the game? Now, I think a lot of people thought maybe, one, it would be a blowout, and that hasn't happened in any of the games really, but I don't think the U.S. was really satisfied with, um, they weren't connecting in a way that they would like. I mean, the possession, there was a lot of time where the ball wasn't in anyone's possession, which in my you know, in, in layman's terms, it means the game was kind of ugly. And so, you know, the, the U.S. really wants to be able to kind of gain control and control momentum a little bit more than they did in that Vietnam game. And they'll certainly be looking to do that against the Netherlands. I've noticed that they never seem to have the same lineup, something that, you know, analysts and people were talking about that it's something that, you know, an the past World Cups, they've had kind of the same girls playing with each other. Is that something you, you've noticed as a coach that, you know, is important for them? Or do you think that they are able to mesh? What is kind of your opinion on them changing lineups so often? Yeah, it, it's kind of like your greatest asset can sometimes be your, your greatest weakness. I think the depth of our team is something that's a strength of ours. Um, I also think there's been a few key injuries late. Um, you, you know, Becky Sauerbrunn out, uh, Mallory Swanson out. All of a sudden now that sort of jumbles the lineup. I think the biggest um, challenge will be the way that's changing in the back. Um, that's something that you really want solidified. And to see Julie Ertz play in the back for the U.S. was um, not un- you know, not unexpected, but certainly hasn't had a lot of time there. It's great for her to get the whole Vietnam game. But as that back tries to really solidify, I think that's going to be important um, for them to to maybe find a stable back line that they feel good about and that can really kind of get unified, um, get on the same page, be kind of all together. And, and I think that'll be an important step for us is trying to find who those back four are going to be. And maybe even the six, Andy Sullivan played there against Vietnam. So it'll be interesting to see if they can find that back six there, you know, defensive center mid their four backs and their goalkeeper and really get them solidified as a unit as this tournament progresses. I was going to say, we haven't seen Julie Ertz in that center back role in quite some time. She kind of moved to that defensive mid position. So what do you think needs to be done? Obviously, I, I think she kind of transitioned well because she's obviously played the role her whole life playing that center back. But, you know, what do you think kind of needs to be done to kind of get her comfortable? And who moves into the defensive mid spot for you? What's kind of your opinion on just that lineup? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, Andy Sullivan was in that role. I think Christy Mewis can play in that defensive center mid role. I think it kind of depends on what they need. And that's why you'll see them change the lineup because you get something different from Christy Mewis than you get from um, Andy Sullivan um, than you might get from a Lindsay Horan who's kind of shared that role a little bit. Um, it was great to see Rose Lavelle get on. That's a key component, I think, of us being successful if, if Rose can get healthy and play. Um, you know, Julie Ertz um, was on the U20 World Cup team that I coached and played center back a lot for us, so I know that she can get the job done there. Um, she's such an incredible competitor, um, but she's also a different center back than a Becky 
Sauerbrunn, who's the composed, um, you know, so she now becomes sort of the ball winning center back. And that's okay. I think it's a great partnership between her and Naomi Guillermo. Guillermo is kind of the composed, um, settle the game, keep things in line. And, and Julie's a little bit more of the um, ball winner, going to get stuck in, going to fight, um, going to see her go to ground and do some things like that. So I think that's a great partnership if that's what they end up deciding to do. And obviously, you kind of mentioned we have, you know, some of the more experienced players that have been there before, Julie Ertz, Alex Morgan, Megan Rapino even on the field. And then you see some of these girls like that are 18 years old coming in, Alyssa Thompson and everyone. Talk to me a little bit about just kind of what you see with that dynamic, kind of the older girls taking the younger ones under their wing. Yeah, you know, and there's some benefit to that. You know, we talk about it in the college level. It's great to have some seniors, but it's also great to have some freshmen that don't know what they don't know, don't know who's supposed to win, can sort of play with this freedom of, you know, I'm just in it. You know, the um, I think it was the 18 year old from Columbia that scored last night. You, know, you just, you're, you have this freedom, I think, with the youth that you don't have expectations on yourself. You're not carrying the weight of the team on your shoulders like an Alex Morgan might be. And so I think that blend of experience in youth, again, might be something that bodes well for the U.S. And obviously, Sophia Smith came in out hot that first game against Vietnam. Two goals and an assist. Talk to me a little bit. Of, now she's kind of already been in the talks for the Golden Boot. You know, she, what a year for her. And I guess two years with the national championship. She was player of the year, everything. I guess, what are some expectations for her? I know she's getting talked about a lot. What have you seen from her and just kind of her style of play? Yeah, you know, I, you know, Sophie's one of those. And she's got incredible pace. And that certainly helps. You know, her ability to threaten and get behind defenses is pretty apparent. And, and you look at a lot of the good strikers um, you know they can do two things they really threaten defenses or they're great goal scorers um, you know I think Alexander Pop answered her call with two goals in in the German game but um, I think Sophie has just really matured in the last year or two and I think that's she's now become not just a threat but a goal scorer as well um, but you know I think the you know her ability to to threaten and get behind defenses and I think the confidence that she has coming into this World Cup um, and in in all honesty the absence of Mallory Pugh has given some space for Sophie to emerge into and to play a bigger role and I think she has the maturity to embrace that which I think that was going to be important that was a not a question but a little bit of can she handle this kind of expanded role um, not necessarily just having to compliment Mal Pugh but actually having to step up and kind of be the threat um, and and I think she's obviously done a great job of that and starting off in the first game like that really is going to help her along the way. Yeah, she didn't look nervous at all, I would say, watching that game. You never know when some of those younger girls come in. Trinity Rodman as well, you know, didn't even look phased at all. Do, do you, is that something as a coach that you've seen, you know, maybe the younger players looking nervous? But I don't think anyone on the U.S. team really looked like they had a lot of nerves or anything. No, I, I would think actually maybe the more seasoned players as, you know, as the game went on and it was 0-0, looked a little bit more like with, you know, like they were getting – okay, we got to do something here, you know, where I think, again, I think the young players are just getting out there and playing and competing. They don't have, oh, wow, last World Cup we did this, or this is, you know, how this is supposed to go. This is what's supposed to happen. And that kind of naiveness um, can put them in a place where they just step on and play. They're just trying to control their emotions about being in a World Cup, and they're not worried about whether we're playing Vietnam or Germany or it's a semifinal or it's a final. It's just, I just got to get out here and play. And um, sometimes that joy and excitement of being in a World Cup can can, can be what fuels you. You know, you look at the Philippines and I think that's, you know, they're just excited to be there and whatever happens, happens. And that's a freedom that they can play with that uh, I think if the U.S. youngsters can follow that, they'll, it will help them just perform and do, the, do what they do well. And obviously Jill Ellis, who used to coach at Illinois, then went on to coach many years for the U.S. women's national team. But she's obviously stepped down. Vlaco has taken over. What have you seen from him just kind of taking on that role as head coach? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's been a, a, you know, a good transition. And I think he's brought in a lot of the young players. You know, it, it was a transition time as, as Jill stepped away. Um, you know, there are a lot of players transition moment as, as uh, you know, players stepped out and new players stepped in. And you've got Rapino and Alex Morgan, you know, hanging on and, you know, so I think, you know, I think Vlatko's done a, a really nice job of sort of swimming through that transition of trying to bring young players in, um, but keeping the experience. I think he's he's very much listened to the players on his team. I think, um, you know, in, in my circles, that seems to be the story is that he's very much, people use a player's coach. I wouldn't say it's necessarily that, but I think he really does involve them in decisions he makes. I think he listens to them. I think he um, values the input of those older players, and I think they value that role that they can 
play in helping form this team and helping form the, the culture that they have and carrying on some of the traditions that um, the women's team has had from, you know, the early days. You know, it's great they've gone back and are doing things about the team in 85 and 91. And so I think they're trying to make sure that that culture of, of winning and competing stays through that. And I think Vlatko's done a good job of that. And obviously the importance of group play. They play Portugal here coming up. But what do they need to do to get that win? And what, what do you think needs to be done for U.S. to come out doing well and in a good position in group play? Yeah, I think to get out of this group, um, really, I mean, they have to convert the chances they have. You know with that dynamic attack that they have that they're going to get opportunities. But I think most nations in Portugal will try to limit that. They're going to try to limit the number of opportunities, probably going to try to limit the space behind for people like Trinity Rodman and Sophie Smith to get in on. And so um, really, I think the efficiency of their attack will be really critical. And, and like I said, I think getting out first in that group, but getting out of the group is obviously the, the goal, but be getting out first in that group certainly makes your path to the semifinals and finals a little bit easier. And when you're talking a tournament, the length of this, anything that lightens your load makes it a little bit easier for you to get to the end result. We kind of touched on the defense a little bit, and you know, U.S. has had kind of a dominant defense for many years. They've you know kind of had a set for. I guess where do you see their strength, either in defense or offense? Where do you see? The, you know, the, I almost said the University of Illinois, you know, United States, where, where is their strength lie, in your opinion? Well, I think their strength is really in their, the, the dynamic attack that we have. I think defensively, you've got a really experienced goalkeeper. I mean, Alyssa Nair has played in World Cups and Olympics, and, and she knows, you know, what that is. Um, I think Guillermo is probably one of the best emerging defenders, not just in the country, but in the world. Um, you know, her ability to read the game, and she has the pace. Um, and so I think those two are really, we're going to rely on those two a lot to to really make sure that we stay organized you know when you have a team a back four that's played together as much as you know Becky Sauerbrunn and, and when it was Becky and Abby and you know you just had this group that had played a lot of minutes together this group hasn't played a lot of minutes together but you've got a couple of players that have played in a lot of environments um, like Alyssa Nair like a Julie Ertz even a, a Kelly O'Hara Emily Fox they've all played this game and so it's just going to take a leader like an Alyssa Nair or even Naomi Girma as young as she is to make sure they stay on the same page um, um, I think they'll get tested in the future rounds as we get into the quarterfinals, semifinals, and, and that will really be the true test is can that defense through the course of this group play get glued together to be strong enough through the knockout rounds to take them to the championship. And kind of switching gears a little bit, we had a alum from the University of Illinois, Alicia Barker, playing for the Philippines, getting the start, everything. You said you even got up really early in the middle of the night to watch some of those games. I'm sure there are fans out there who have done the same. I haven't gotten up super early to watch yet, but, you know, what have you seen from her? Obviously getting the start, what, what have you seen from her and that team? Uh, it's just amazing. You know, she played, started and played 90 minutes um, in their first game um, and then played about 70 minutes in the Philippines' first ever World Cup victory. I mean, what an amazing experience. Um, I get chill bumps talking about it just to to know that now I get to add another national team jersey to my wall uh, of someone who's who's made it and played for their country in a World Cup um, and I'm just so proud of her I mean for someone to you know finish their college days um, go out in the working world you know obviously she's still involved and whatnot but then to make the commitment to put herself in a place to be fit enough to play 90 minutes in a World Cup um, just phenomenal and so excited um, you know have been texting back and forth her mom is there to watch and and sent me a picture holding up an Illinois flag and um, couldn't be prouder of just that accomplishment for her as a as an athlete and as a human being. What does it say about your school and your team? Obviously you have this whole wall here behind us. What does it say just about you know the school and just her representing you by there? There's a flag all the way across the country of Illinois, an Illinois flag. You know what does it what does that mean to I you? Mean, you know I think and we say this all the time um, you know I think we all take that as a sense of pride that her development through her time here and every teammate that she trained against in practice, every teammate she competed against, every opponent in the Big Ten. Like the Big Ten can take credit for the games that she's played against Big Ten opponents has prepared her for this. So I think there's a sense of pride as a program that we've helped 
develop someone who can go off and do something great in their in their sport. And and I think, you know, as a university, I think that's what universities are there for, to create people who can go off and do great things in something that they're passionate about and something that they have a fire to be the best at. And, uh, you know, to see Alicia go off and do that, I think there's a sense of pride. And I hope all of her teammates and, and, and even Big Ten opponents feel a sense of pride when they see her out there on the field competing, knowing, you know what, we played a part in helping her get there. Um, and that's the kind of program that we want to have. Does this kind of give a little bit of an inspiration to your players as well? Like, I, I obviously I know the United States team is very competitive to get on. That is uh, obviously a very tough team. But does it kind of give a little inspiration to your players? Like, oh, well, you know, it's really neat to see someone that maybe I've played with or, you know, I've grown up watching or, or you know, I, I saw on my recruiting visit. You know, what's it mean to th those kind of girl yeah, those girls? I mean, I, I think like um, like everyone, it, it gives you a chance to dream, right? Um, you know, Ellen Pearson just played in Sweden all summer long, her father Swedish. You know, the opportunity to potentially one day put on a Swedish uniform and play, um, you know, for her father's home country would be a dream come true. And she looks at that and says, that's a dream worth dreaming. That's a dream I can, can reach for. And so, um, you know, I think that that's important. You know, um, we had a, a former player, Olivia Schmidt, who played here as well, who played on the Philippines team long before they were ever competitive enough to qualify for a World Cup. So you think about those kind of legacies and those kinds of opportunities, say, and you're opening the doors for girls to dream about things that 10 years ago just weren't there. And so I think this whole World Cup, the players on all of these teams for, um, from countries from, you know, the Vietnamese to, um, to the U.S. team are inspiring young girls to say this is something that we can do. And the, the stands being full of people are saying, and yeah, this is something we want to support and watch and be a part of. So I'm excited for that. I guess just coming full circle here, I guess final thoughts. What are your predictions on the World Cup? I guess, who do you, who do you see maybe in the championship? What are What is wow. your kind of your... Well, certainly, <laughs> certainly rooting for the U.S., um, but I think the... Um, the sleeper team might be Spain. Um, you know, I saw them in the Euros this summer and they were missing three of their, I would say, best players and they were phenomenal. Um, they had a phenomenal first game. Um, so I think Spain is really one that I think is poised to maybe surprise some people. Um, you can never um, underestimate um, France. You can never underestimate Germany. I think England has poured a lot into their professional league. Um, they've had some injuries. So I think had they been injury free, England would have been up there. Um, um, but I, I think um, there's going to be somebody slip in there. There's going to be a, um, a Columbia or a, you know somebody that you don't expect. Um, certainly, I think, slip into the quarterfinals, if not the semifinals. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it.